Hey guys, welcome back. This is Chosen Architect, and today we're gonna be setting up some automation for cobblestone and also dabbling just a little bit in Ender.io. I hope you guys are ready. So on my list of to-dos for today is to get ourselves cobblestone compacting. We're gonna need to have tons of cobblestone compacted very soon to be able to travel to any of the uh, dimensions that are in this pack, such as the mining dimension or uh, even go into the deep dark. There is so many different things that you could do, but you need like a large, I mean, large quantities of cobblestone. So to do that, I think we're, we're going to start fresh with a brand new cobblestone generator. And then also we updated again. So I need to change that format back and everything else needs to be changed. You're probably going to see this a couple times uh, with the aspect ratio and everything can get knocked all the way down. Alpha, good. Because I think it looks so much better when it's just clear like that and you don't have that popping up in your face. But anyways, let's get let's get down to business. We're going to need a few things. Quite a few things, actually. Um, so today we're also going to be working on Ender.io. I kind of spoiled that by having that open there. Um, but let's get a cobble gen. Another one from Tiny Progressions. So I'm going to have a completely separate Tiny Progressions cobble gin ready to go. Uh, now, we are going to need another bucket. So I guess we can go ahead and just make a bucket, right? Let's just make a couple buckets so I can have two on me. One will be water. One will be lava. Easy as that. Um, there we go. And that'll help us to make our base tier. And we're going to need some cobblestone, apparently. <laughs> That's fixing to change. We won't need cobblestone anymore once we get this going. Uh, it'll be kind of ridiculous, the amount of cobblestone we'll be getting. But this, honestly, is going to be very easy to set up. And is only going to require, really, two blocks. One being the cobblestone and one being the crafter that we're going to use. So let's go ahead and get this thing upgraded through the tiers. Um, so iron, then we go to the tier four, which is going to require blaze rods. Now, I think this is not the tier. It needs to go to diamond. There we go. Then to blaze rod, which this farm has been working in, by the way, this is kind of crazy, but this growth crystal, if you just right click on it with the, <laughs> this wand, it auto grows the plants. Like it auto grows everything. Like it's pretty insane at how fast it actually grows this. Um, and then you can, of course, use this if you want to make this thing go faster. Uh, or I could set it to area, but this thing can't keep up under area mode. So I just let it do one block at a time. But anyways, look at all these items. Now, these are the items that are specifically produced from the magical crops. So if you take a look, um, the major thing that I think is awesome that this thing does, it does quartz, which is great. It does blaze rods which is really good, and it does gas tiers. Gas tiers are some of the the hardest things I think to get normally when there's no way to, to resource gen them. But as you can see, this thing spawns in all of these items. No joke. Like if you pause, you can look like every dye, every stained glass color, diamonds, gold, huge amounts of items. It is quite insane, um, but very good, very good. Uh, but anyways, let's go ahead and grab those uh, blaze rods that we're going to need. Um, and that actually comes just in time for us to upgrade this. Now we can get this upgraded. Pull that out. Now that should unlock a quest for us. Where's it at? The base quest here. And we can claim that and we get a loot chest. Perfect. And there we go. It finally decided to work. And then the last one is the tier five, which I think is the last one you can get. Yes, because we have lava and fuse stone. That's something that's not even related. And this is just emerald, which we, of course, have a bunch of emerald. Now, now that we have the cobblestone generator, now this will do 64 blocks and it makes one cobblestone every tick. This thing isn't going to be the fastest in the world, but if we get it set up now, we won't have to worry about it later on. But we're going to go into RF tools. And what we're going to need is a crafter. Now, there are three different tiers of crafters, I think. Yeah, tier one, tier two, three. We're going to work on hopefully getting a tier three made. That's the goal. Let's go ahead and get another crafting table. We'll throw those in there. And we need to make this base block here, which is going to require some gold nuggets. So let's make some of those. 
And this is going to get us like just slightly started into uh, one of my favorite mods is RF tool. So I, I absolutely love this mod. It is so good. So let's get the tier one crafter. Let's upgrade to the tier two, which is just going to require really just more crafting tables. And I think it's the same for all of them. So I'm going to grab a bit, a couple more, and then we're going to upgrade that to a tier two. And then the tier three is again, more crafting tables. And now we have a tier three crafter. Perfect. Now this thing just needs some power. So with our wireless power that we currently have, all we need is some paper, some light blue dye. Uh, I think we GPS is what it's called. Yes. And we actually have one. So we can take this GPS and we can get this all started. Plus we can claim our reward here. And then as you can see, this will link us to the deep dark and the aroma mining dimension. Now we don't need to set this anywhere in particular, but I would like to maybe have it in one of our automation areas, or I guess we have this area over here that we can probably use. So all we need to do is place this down and it will actually place blocks in to the uh, table above. As you can see, it just fills this up now. And then what we can do here is this thing doesn't have any power yet, but I'm gonna link it. We're gonna go down, we're gonna hook this thing up. We're gonna get some power going to it. Pretty simple there. And I'm just gonna throw this inside of our wireless power transfer node. Now that should give it power. And hopefully this, I mean, this should be enough power. This thing doesn't use too much power at all to run. And we're gonna put this thing in fast mode and then we're gonna start making our recipes. Now what you can do is, is say, remember the current items in the uh, internal buffer and that's what we want to get. Um, but we want to get where you see forget, this will forget everything, but we want to tar start with our first recipe. And then we're just going to add a compressed recipe here. Hit apply. That's going to compress everything there into this. Now we want to say uh, right here, I think it's all input, all size and considered slot. Uh, the result will stay in the internal buffer. That's what we want. Uh, we actually don't want to remember the current layout. Let's make sure this goes keep. So that should stay inside there, right? Results for crafting operation will stay in the input buffer. So the results for the crafting operations will go into the output buffer, but remain items. Um, operations will go into the output buffer. No, we want it to stay in the internal. Um, let's actually stop this. We should be able to set this to slow mode. I want to clear this because I don't want them going there. I want them to stay inside here. Set it back to fast mode and keep one uh, one item for every yeah in every inventory slot. Yes. Well, actually, we probably won't have to worry about this because this is actually going to continue, and uh, I just don't want it going in this slot. I guess when it fills up in here. It should work. I mean, we could probably fill this with normal cobblestone and that will prevent that from happening. All right, let's drain that. There we go. <laughs> oh, this is so, so hard to get this to stop. Like, there we go. Like that. Just fill this up. Okay, it should honestly stop. It shouldn't... Keep doing this. The results for the crafting operation, press ap apply after changing. Oh, I haven't clicked apply. Derp. Okay, so that should not go in here. There we go. Okay, so yeah, we shouldn't have to worry about this output slot. Um, so now I know. All right, so anything else should be just fine. We should be able to get all of these into one section. We'll throw this all in here. And now we'll move on to the next recipe, which is exactly the same process. And then hit apply. And so this needs to actually be set to internal, then apply. Then it will keep its internal recipe there. Um, the item is, it says all items in the input slots are consumed. Yes, that's exactly, exactly what we want. So now we have compressed cobblestone. Um, so going into double compressed cobblestone, then we need to make triple compressed cobblestone, which we're going to hit a point soon that we may have to um, change things up. So we'll hit apply. And now this is going to make 
double or tri or it's going to make triple compressed cobblestone. And we're going to have to wait for this till it reaches its its current point in which we can actually make quadruple uh, cobblestone. And so over time, we're going to be able to do this. We're going to be able to watch this process and it will actually start making the recipes. I don't think we can actually upgrade this. I don't think we can go um, and actually apply the item. Let's let's try. Let's do this here and we can go compressed cobblestone. I don't think we can do quadruple compressed cobble. Can we? Yes, I guess we can. We can already set the recipe um, for this. And it looks like it will work. Okay, so yeah, we can do that. Uh, we can already get this set up. So we have quadruple and then we need quintuple. Just like that. And it's going to take a second for this to recognize. Then we can do that. And I think this has eight slots. So we can go up to quintuple. And we can do sextuple. Sextuple, there we go. Internal, apply. And we can just keep going. Keep going. Um, and I think this actually goes all the way up to octuple, which is exactly what we're going to eventually need. So quintuple, sextuple, um, septuple. We'll change that. Apply. And our last craft crafting slot will give us octuple. Compressed. Which is, believe it or not, actually required in this pack. Um, if we take a look at what this is used for, I do believe it's used for something. Oh, maybe not. So this, maybe this recipe isn't actually used for anything in particular. Okay, so we need the sextuple and quintuple. That's all we need. So we can go ahead and actually remove this. All we need is sextuple, I think. Right? So we should be able to... Remove this, right? Forget remembered layout. Forget, no, that's for this other thing. I guess we just remove this entirely and that will remove that recipe. There we go. Pretty simple. And so now it's going to go all the way up to sextuple on the cobblestone. And guys, that's automated cobblestone for you. This will literally work. It's super compact, super easy to do. And it's done inside of a crafter on the fastest mode, and you could set a redstone signal on this to shut everything off if you want to. It shouldn't cause any lag or any issues. Uh, it just running in the distance like that. But anyways, that's how we get it started. So let's open up these loot chests and see what we got. Are we lucky? We got speed upgrades. That's not bad. Yep. yep. We're yeah. We're lucky. <laughs> Those are the refined storage discs that I was wanting. Oh man, is this going to be a life changer? I'm going to save one of those because I'm going to use it over here. Um, but first, let's set our priority on our disks, I think we can do. Uh, actually, I probably just want to just store the store some of these disks. I don't actually need that many disks. I'm just going to store them for now until I need them later on. Because I don't want random stuff going on these disks and things getting all messed up. But anyways, uh, that was awesome. <laughs> that was lucky. 64K drives. You can't beat that. Like for the refined storage, like 80,000 items can now be stored inside just this simple storage system. It, um, yeah. Oh boy. That is ridiculous. But anyways, let's start working on Ender IO. Now this is going to be super fun and in it's in its own right. And I think what we could possibly do is, I mean, we have everything needed, I think for Ender IO. Ender IO is not that hard to get started with. I know it may seem daunting at first, and there's a lot of probably other things that you could probably start off with, but I think later on down the road, Ender IO will become the best equipment that you can probably get at the later at the later game stuff for automation. Um, it's just so good for automation. I mean, it's it's uh, phenomenal. Uh, but all we got to do is make these simple machine casings, which is going to require grains of infinity. Now, grains of infinity come from uh, compressed gravel in a diamond mesh. So we can probably get that pretty easy if we don't already have grains of infinity. It doesn't look like we do, but we can probably get some uh, gravel pretty quick, actually. 
Uh, I know one way of getting gravel pretty quick. Um, let's actually take a look at this. Let's get our grinders, which I have them in here. At least I thought I had them in here. My actually additions machines, I guess, are permanently gone. I don't know where I put them. Oh, actually, I do know where I put them. They're in here. So here's our crusher. I actually need to get this stuff moved in my other chest. That would probably be a good idea <laughs> in the long run. So I don't have to worry about all of my stuff not being there. All right, we'll take this and I'll throw those in here. We're going to eventually get all this stuff set up in there anyways. All right, so I'm going to set up just some simple automation. Um, actually, we're going to pull. I think we can pull from our old setup. And what I'll do is I'll just hook this back up because now we have wireless power. So it's going to be pretty easy to get this thing set up and actually functioning like it's supposed to. I'm going to grab my wrench. And yeah, we're going to have to do the prerequisites to get this started. And then we can make a, a seed and that will make getting the, the materials a little bit easier. All right, so let's set our machines back up and we'll get these hooked up. We're going to have to run cobblestone from here. So it's already getting pulled out um, and we're going to run this into the top of all the machines, basically. So this will just build up over time. And then we need to pull from each one of these machines. That's where our wrench is going to come back in handy. We'll disconnect everything. And this is going to all get funneled into that chest. Like that. So, there we go. Now we have our cobblestone set back up again. Super easy. Break that. And there we go. All right, so that should get us, or not cobblestone automated, that should get our gravel automated again. Let's shut this off. Let's go ahead and, I guess, manually sieve it ourselves, And we're gonna make some diamond meshes, guys. Because, I mean, we already have the automation for gravel. We just literally need diamond mesh, which is gonna require some string. And we'll make some diamond mesh. Um, so diamond mesh is pretty easy to make. At least in our case, with as much as we have going. So one, two, three, four, five. Five is all we can make. So that will work. That will work. Um, now it starts on this side every time. So let's go ahead and get this put on this side. And we'll get five going there. That middle slot has to be connected. And it will pretty much say only use diamond at this point. And all we have to do is swap out the center one and it will replace it with everything else. Perfect. So we don't need too many, or too much diamond mesh to honestly get this running. We can turn this on and now our gravel is going to go through only the diamond mesh sections. That should get us tons of stuff. Look at that. By the way, is that netting us? Oh no, that must be osmium. It's getting. Yes, that should eventually get us some grains of affinity. Perfect. Now, you can also get grains of infinity if you had access to bedrock, but as you might not know, there is no bedrock. Uh, the bed, like the ground level is completely empty. There's no bedrock at all. So you're not going to be digging down and using bedrock to your advantage and lighting it on fire like you normally would for Ender IO. But you will get it here, and so I'll take that grains of infinity. And we'll take a look at what we actually need to make the Grains of Infinity Seed, which is going to be very easy for us to do and be very helpful later on. We're definitely going to need this. This is like a big part of, uh, of Ender I.O. later on down the road. So it needs Prudentium, and we're only going to need four of those. So we'll work on that eventually. I'm not too concerned about it just yet. So, Ender I.O. Awesome, awesome mod. Let's take a look in here. So we're going to need iron and iron bars, literally just to make our first mach uh, simple machine chassis. It's not going to take too much to do that, I don't think. By the way, those had power in them. We need to also link them up. We need to make the GPS. We need to make three of them. Right? Three of those. Each linked to their own thing. Because as you can hear, they shut off. So let's link them. 
and that will allow us to charge him. Perfect. We'll just go downstairs to our power room. By the way, I can't wait to work on our power room. Oh, it's going to be so good once we actually get this fully set up. I'm going to have a rainbow generator, hopefully fully automated down here, and you'll be able to see the rainbow generator from this floor. Oh, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. That's my plans. You know, that's just, it, oh, I can't wait. But anyway, so that should get the gravel back up and running so we don't have to worry about it. And everything should be good. By the way, this charm ended up fully repairing itself inside that lava. Um, and I ended up throwing one of these over here. Somebody gifted me this birthday pickaxe and it places cakes down. So I was thinking about using it for Britannia later on down the road. But it uses lava, which is coming from here, to slowly but surely repair it. Um, and I did, I did get this to actually automate. All I had to do was pipe it into it and it, it does work. It seems to work perfectly fine. But anyways, let's get back to uh, business and what we were working on. We just needed to get that gravel going. All right, so, into I.O. And like I said, we needed the simple machine. We actually need two of these. We need these simple machine chassis. Now, we should have everything for this, I think. I'm almost positive we have everything for this. Simple machine. There's that. Now, we just need another grain of infinity, which we... Probably have in here? Yes. Alright, and that means we can make another one. That's going to get us two really good early machines. Um, and one of those, if I can find it, is going to be the powered simple, simple powered um, alloy smelter. Now, there, there's also a powered furnace, but we're just going to need the simple alloy smelter for one, getting started. Which is going to require stone gears... Which should be pretty easy to get. There we go. Throw that in there. And then we're going to need that. So perfect. So simple alloy smelter. Ready to go. Now we're also going to need the simple sag mill. Right here. Which this one's a little bit more expensive. It's going to require a piston. And what else? Stone gears. I think we have... And flint is something else we're going to need, which I do have a bit of. So that's not a huge issue. So that together. And there's our two items. Now, GPS. We'll go ahead and make two more of those. And we're going to use this to power these machines. I almost want to create a separate network for these machines, but they don't use that much power. They do consistently use power, but I'm not that concerned with it. All right, and then we'll go ahead and set up some basic automation. So just some regular chests. I think we'll be fine. We need uh, an input and output chests. And then we'll head over here. And I'm just going to place them simply in one of our side rooms. Like this. And link them. That'll give them all power. Let's go ahead and throw that back in. There we go. If I had, like, faster movement, that's something I'm going to have to work on. All right, let's set this back inside there. We're about to run out of slots for this. And it looks like... Is this keeping up? Yeah, it looks like it's keeping up. Three spectral coils that we have on that is doing a really good job. All right, so now that we have these powered and ready to go, they should be powering, right? Am I missing something? Am I missing the fact that these are not being powered? Hmm. It could be that our other machines are completely using up all the power and these are these actually need to be prioritized. Maybe. Detect the block, sag mill, alley smelter. Harvester crusher, crusher. If we take out the crushers. Maybe that'll get them powered. I need to figure out, maybe it even has a max range or something that it, I mean, it should support that. Or maybe these can't actually be powered that way. That could be the case as well. Um, because everything else should be completely fine. I guess what we could do is use our other, uh, grains of infinity and make herself the generator from Indrio. I guess that makes sense. We can we can use its own mod. Uh, doesn't doesn't hurt my feelings any. Um, and we do generator. 
what we can do is do the simple sterling generator, which is requires infinity by metal gear. Okay, so it's gonna require these nuggets and grains of infinity for that. So I guess while that's set up, I can go ahead and put these back in so that way our crushers continue to run. Perfect. It's just weird that for some reason they're not connecting. I, I don't know exactly what the reasoning is behind that. Maybe it has to accept, I, I don't know. Maybe the current block state, something weird like that is preventing it. I don't know. All right, let's check our grains of infinity. How many more do we have? Two more. Uh, we'll be getting pretty close. I think this actually requ uh, requires another machine chassis. So hopefully we get another one while we wait. So there's that. What else do we need for this? Stone brick. And a furnace. And last but not least, a piston. And then this is also going to run off of coal. So we're going to need some sort of method for coal. All right, do we get another one? Oh boy. It's going to take a little bit of time. But this should, I mean, this is actually sieving the fastest. It, it's actually set up to sieve the fastest. Right now, the only fa the only way to go faster than this is actually just to have max water wheels, like 60-something water wheels on here, as you've seen in, like, previous b uh, base views, which is kind of ridiculous. That should be, like, the only other way. Um, man, maybe we should have just made the infinity ingot flower. That probably would have been the best way to do that. All right, so I guess I'll be back because this is taking its its sweet time here. I'll be back whenever uh, I guess it generates one of the uh, grains of infinity, right? Yep, I'll be back. So here's our other piece of gr her other grain of infinity, and that should be the last one we need to get ourselves some power. There we go. Now let's get some coal, and we should be good there. Oh, look at that. We ended up getting ourselves ender berries. Now, this right here, not actually healthy, contains 253 grams of sugar. That's a lot of sugar, by the way. Uh, 53 grams of fat. That's quite a bit of fat. And 394 grams of ender dust. Side effects of ender dust include nausea, dizziness, confusion, and random teleporting. So, yeah, that is something. We never get any effects from it, though. Uh, but anyways, let's go ahead and take the simple generator now. We can throw that down here. Give that some fuel to burn. Look at that. I love the way these blocks look. Oh, so good. But anyways, that should be charging both of these now. Because this produces 30 RF per tick, and each one of these blocks consume 15. So you can get away with this. Which works out perfectly in the end. Alright, so, on the sides, I'm actually going to break this temporarily. It's going to be just so we can set up easy automation on both of these machines. And we're going to get our chest placed down. Chest here, chest here, here, and here. All right. So let's open up the config. This is going to be our export. So we need to set this to push. And then this one's going to be set to pull. Just like that, that one is automated. Same for this, I want it to go that and up. I want the output to be up top. So that's gonna be push, that's gonna be pull. Pretty simple. Now, on the sag mill, this is honestly the most important as we move on into more Ender IO stuff. We're gonna need grass clippings. And to get grass clippings to kind of progress through, we're gonna need bone mill and shears. So let's grab some bone mill Good old hardy bone mill. And we need shears. And we're just going to have to get some grass, really. I don't think grass is in here, right? Oh, actually, we double tall grass. I don't know if double tall grass works, but we'll see if that does. Will double tall grass give us grass in here? It does. So, honestly, I guess I could just use double tall grass. And that's going to give me the same result. Um, as you can see, we'll get the clippings and trimmings. Now, this stuff right here is really 
great. It's going to be create the organic green dye that we're going to need later on. And from this, we're going to have to use the alloy smelter. Which shouldn't take too much, I don't think, to use. We'll take this, combine this with some slime, uh, which we actually have over here. So here is some slime balls. I'll take those. That's why I love this right here. It just gets all those materials that normally are just kind of a pain to get. And this allows you to, you know, have them at your disposal. And as you can see right here, it did consume those. And it's going to continue to run. And perfect. Look at that. Organic green dye. Put it right up in here. And we're going to have to use this to make... Well, I guess it, it, it's considered a dye... But the main thing is uh, with Ender IO on the ca uh, casing or chassis, I think it's called. Yes, chassis. So we're going to use this to make the industrial machine chassis to make industrial dye blend. And then we'll have to put it inside of uh, a alloy uh, smelter, which is the current one we have. It does work in the simple alloy uh, smelter. Now, the industrial dye is going to require black dye which we can we have to make the organic black dye as well which is pulverized coal and slime um, and then we need crushed quartz and lapis so quartz and lapis are something that we're going to have to set inside here to automate as well uh, so let's go ahead and grab that we'll grab some nether quartz which uh, I think I have more nether quartz in here so I'll just throw that and then I'll throw a bit of lapis in there as well and that should just all produce and should work so I should just be able to throw that in here that will automatically transfer and it'll just start crushing it over time pretty simple pretty straightforward let's get our grass clippings in here and we'll just have this uh, this running because honestly we need more than this uh, to get because we're gonna need a bunch of this industrial dye over time it gives you six so which allows you to make six of these machines which is not that that difficult to get, and it's really, really good. I, just, I mean, honestly, it's it's well worth it. But we're going to make more of that, because I'm sure we're going to have more than just six of those machines laying around um, after we're all said and done. But anyways, guys, this has been a good episode. I hope you enjoyed this episode learning quite a bit. I hope you learned something new uh, with my lovely googly eyes. But anyways, if you guys have been enjoying this series... You know what to do. Don't forget to click that subscribe button if you haven't already. And also give this video a thumbs up, guys. I really appreciate it. You guys are awesome. And as always, thanks for watching.